Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to an exciting lesson where we dive into the new and upgraded features to the Curves filter instead of On One Photo Raw. In this lesson, we'll explore how the Enhanced Curves filter provides both precision and control over your editing when creating style and correcting tone. From quick contrast to faded matte looks to precise color toning, the Curves filter might just be your next favorite feature in Photo Raw. So let's jump into it. Let's explore some new possibilities with Curves and some quick creative ways that we can use it to elevate our photography. So inside of Photo Raw, let's first just take a look at the Curves filter itself. We'll take a look at how the tone curve works and how we can use it to modify the look of our images. So I have this flower photo here, just the original right out of the camera image, no adjustments or modifications. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the tone curve in the Curves filter to modify the look of our photo a bit. So let's go into the Effects tab. Let's add a filter and we'll add curves. So in the curves filter here, let's just take a look at the main feature here, the tone curve. Now inside of the tone curve, if you have been using the tone curve in previous versions of Photo Raw, you may notice it now has a nice slick new upgraded look. So behind the tone curve, we now have a histogram of the specific tones within our photo and an enhanced grid with a gradient for even more fine tuning and specific adjustments. So if you're not familiar with the tone curve, let's just go over how the tone curve works and how we can use it to adjust specific tones in our imagery. So let's start down at the bottom of the tone curve here, far left at the bottom. This is going to be the darkest section of your photograph. It's going to be the blacks within the image. As we move up on the line here, this tone curve line, as we move up on it, things are just going to get brighter from there. So we start at the bottom left with the blacks. And as we move up on the line, we have our shadows. We have our midtones, highlights, and then Finally, the whites of the image. So again, we have the darkest regions of the image down here, the blacks of the photograph. We then have the shadows, midtones, highlights, and then the whites of the image there. You can sort of see that represented with the histogram here. It's a pretty well-defined histogram for the tone curve because again, we have the shadows here in between the blacks and the midtones. And then in between the shadows and our highlights, we have the midtones there, finally highlights, and then again, the whites. So it just starts out with the blacks of the image and then it moves up and it just gets brighter and brighter as it goes up. Now, it's really important to try to understand that because that way you can easily know which tone you want to modify and where you have to pull a specific point to. So for example, in this line here, you can see it's just a nice straight line, meaning it's at its default. It's at the image's original tone curve. So what we can do to modify it is we can drop specific points down in specific tone sections and we can modify them. So for example, let's say I want the midtones a bit brighter within the scene. I've dropped this point here near my shadows, but I can just drag it up near my midtones and I'll just pull up on that point there straight up and you can see it's brightening up the midtones within my scene. You can also see that represented with that histogram moving from the left to the right. Now you may notice that it's also brightening up the shadow tones and the highlights. Well, that's because this tone curve line is adjusted along those regions as well. You can see it's curved above its default. You can sort of see that shadow of the original line there to sort of represent the default tone, but you can see it's curved above that, meaning that it's brightening up those specific sections. Now, if you wanted to darken the midtones and those other tones within the scene, you could pull the midtone point down. Again, that 
histogram will move from the right to the left, depending on uh, your photograph. But you can see that the midtones now are more sort of in those shadowy tone regions within the scene. So let's say we just want to modify the midtones within our scene. To modify strictly the midtones or to target a specific tone, you can drop down multiple points or as many points on the tone curve as you want. So let's just drop a point down here on our shadows and we'll pull that down to where it was near its default. And you can see it brings those shadow tones back to their default setting, or at least similar to their default setting. I'll do the same thing with the highlights here to target those and pull those back to similar to their original setting. And then you can see here in our tone curve, we're really just boosting up a lot of those midtones and those middle grays with this point there. And you can see now, because I've created two points or at least one point on either side of that midtone point, I can fine tune that specific tone within my photograph. And you can see it, it's very powerful, so it gets quite intense if you sort of overdo it. We can get a lot of sort of just unwanted uh, tones and colors in there. But if we just modify it nice and sort of just subtle, you get some really awesome looks within the scene. Now, if you don't want to keep a specific point or you want to remove a point within the scene, really easy to do. All you have to do is right click and we can remove that specific point. Another handy thing within the tone curve here, if I just remove this point here, is if you're not sure which tone to modify, there's this new handy tone dropper tool that we can use. We can just select this. And let's say we wanna brighten up the midtones. I'll just grab sort of the middle grays within the sky here, and I'll pull up. And you can see by dropping down and holding down on the mouse and then pulling up and down, I can fine tune that specific tone within the scene. I'll do the same thing with my sort of shadowy tones here. And if I turn this off and on, just a nice basic adjustment. And all I did was really just grab the tone dropper and I targeted those two specific tones within my photo. Now, another thing you can do to modify these points here is you can select one. So let's say I want to fine tune this midtone point. I can select it and I can come down to these in and out points. I can just click in there and then I can move them up and down just with the up and down arrow keys on my keyboard to fine tune where they're placed within the tone curve. There's also styles inside of the tone curve. If you're not sure, or you want to just start with a preset, we can go into the style here and there's a few different styles you can use to modify the look. So now that we know how the tone curve works and how we can use it, let's jump into those tips and techniques for getting creative with it and using it to bring life into our images. So my first tip is to create contrast with the tone curve. The tone curve is one of the most powerful tools for creating contrast, and you can use it to really fine tune and adjust the strength of the contrast within your scene. So let's go into the effects tab and let's add a filter. And you guessed it, we're gonna add the curves filter. So let's just rename this tone curve contrast. And in the tone curve here to create contrast, it's really quite easy. We essentially just need two points in the scene. And 
to create the contrast, we're going to create what is sometimes called an S-curve. So to create the S-curve, or to create that contrast curve within our scene, we're going to drop a point near our shadow tones, pull that down a little bit. That's going to darken those shadow tones, increase the blacks and those darker areas of the scene. And then we're going to head up to our highlights, sort of highlight mid-tone range here, drop another point, and just pull that up. You can see we're creating a little bit of an S, you know, it's sort of a baby S there, nothing too crazy, but with that slight curve at the shadows, pulling them down a little bit and darkening them, and then brightening up our mid-tone highlights, you can see we get a nice bit of contrast within the photo. Now you can of course fine tune the other regions if you want a little bit more of those mid-tones lightened up, you could drop a point there and then you could fine tune those regions as well. So essentially when creating contrast, I would recommend fine tuning it to an S curve or at least just sort of a slight S curve, it doesn't have to be a, an exact S, but just a nice little curve below your shadows and a nice little bump above, let me remove that, nice little bump above your sort of mid-tone highlight region there. And you can see right out of the gate, does an awesome job at creating contrast within the photograph. Now, one thing I want to mention when creating contrast, because if I turn this off and on, you can see it does modify the color a little bit. So one thing when creating contrast, and we'll jump into more of these later on in the lesson, but I'm going to show you a blend mode that you can use to avoid that color cast when you're modifying contrast. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to make this quite intense. Let's just make it a little bit more intense than I had it. Just like that. So if I turn this off and on, you can see it modifies those colors quite a bit, makes them a bit warmer, really brings out that orange red look within the scene. Well, let's say we don't want that. Let's go into our gear icon. We'll go to our blending options here. And again, we'll discuss more of these later on in the lesson. But for now, let's just head down to the luminosity blend mode. With luminosity, you can see that it takes away all of that color modification and it strictly fine tunes the luminance or the tones. Basically, with luminosity, it's only, only going to target the brightness and contrast within the scene. It's not going to target the actual color hues or saturations. So now if I turn this off and on, we're just fine tuning the luminance or those you know sort of contrast uh, tones within the scene and we're not modifying any of the color of the image. So that's how to create contrast within the curves filter. Let me just hide these blending options there. And you can see it just comes from a nice subtle S curve there. And this one's intense, but you know, pulling down on your shadows a little bit and then pulling up on your highlight midtones, you're well on your way for a nice bit of contrast boost within your photo. And remember, if it's looking a little bit too intense with the color, head down to that luminosity blend mode. My next tip for modifying and using the curves filter is to adjust the brightness of specific tones in your scene. And we talked a little bit about this in the first sort of tip where we talked about what the tone curve does but I really wanted to dive a little bit deeper into it and really emphasize adding in contrast whenever you're boosting up darker tones within your photo. So let's go into the effects tab. Let's add that curves filter there. And in the curves filter here, let's say we want to pull up on the shadow tones. We want to brighten up those darker regions of the scene. Well, let's just pull up on those shadow tones here. And we brighten things up. You know, it's definitely done what we wanted it to do. It's brightened the darker tones of the scene up. And we've sort of moved that histogram now over a little bit to the left. 
into that sort of mid-tone shadow tone area. Well, the image is just looking a little bit flat. It's looking a little bit dull. And if we zoom in here, there's not much contrast within the scene. Also, really sorry about that dust spot. Um, but there's not much contrast within the photo. So whenever you're brightening up specific tones in your image, specifically shadow tones, you know, even oftentimes mid-tones, grab another point and just pull it down a little bit. You can see that by modifying that one little point there and bringing back some of those shadowy tones within the scene, it's giving it a little bit of contrast. Now, if you go too far, it can look really wonky. And if you go up really high, you can see it gets just too sort of exposed. But by just fine tuning it a little bit, just bring back a little bit of those blacks and those shadowy tones, you can really help make the image, you know, exposed, but also not so flat. Now, there's also these regions in here that you may be noticing that are a little bit sort of crunched up. And that's just because of Again, this sort of slider here, or this point here, trying to bring in those shadowy tones back into that region. So if you're experiencing this, this just may be because these two points are too close together and they're being modified too intensely. So if you're encountering this where you have just a little bit of a, an odd looking contrast look in your scene, try pulling one of the points up and to the right and you can sort of fix that odd look. So if we go back, you see how it gets a little bit odd looking there in the contrast. And that's just because we're pulling up on those shadowy tones and then we're also trying to pull down on them sort of near the same tones at the same time. So in this situation, just pull up to the right a little bit and brighten up more of those mid-tones. And then what you can do is you can sort of fine tune those mid-tones a little bit by grabbing a point and then adjusting there. So not too bad of a job, you know, just by pulling up on, so those shadowy midtones, remember giving back some contrast into that region, making sure there's detail, and then just fine tuning very uh, subtly the midtone point there. And remember, if you encounter instances like this where you get just a little bit of a wonky looking contrast, again, it just may be because the points are being modified in sort of similar tones and by trying to pull up on a tone and then pull back on that same sort of tone, you get a little bit of a wonky contrast. So remember, just pull up and to the right a little bit and you can sort of fine tune. My next tip for using and modifying the curves filter is to selectively apply it to modify and adjust specific regions of your photo. So with this image here, I'm just going to use the develop tab right out of the gate just to sort of fix the, the tone really quickly. So I'm just going to pull back on the exposure a little bit. The image is a bit underexposed and then I'll pull up on my midtones and maybe add in a little bit of contrast. Nothing too crazy at all just sort of fixing that uh, area in the sky and just sort of the overall brightness of the scene. So let's now go into the effects tab. We'll add a filter and let's add a curves filter here. Now with this curves filter here, I'm gonna rename this Brighten. So we're gonna use this curves filter to sort of brighten these darker sections in this barn here and over there to the right. So with this, let's just pull up on our shadows a little bit. The sort of shadow midtones there. Pull back on the midtones, maybe just a hair, at least the highlights just a little bit. And then let's give it some contrast. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to match up this particular roof with this section of roof here, just to allow me to sort of paint in this curves filter into that region so that I can sort of clean up these darker sections and make it appear as if they're a little bit more evenly exposed. So 
Let's turn this on again. And I'm going to go into the masking options and I'm going to invert the mask. That way I can use my masking brush. I've grabbed a masking brush. It's B on the keyboard if it's not selected. I'm gonna to go to my mode and choose paint in. I'll use a nice feathering of 100 for a nice soft brush edge, opacity at 100 and flow at 100. And I'm just going to brush this in into these regions that I want to be just a little bit brighter. And maybe a little bit on this roof here as well. I don't wanna to go too far. but just a wee little bit will help. And so just with that, you can see it's doing a whole lot to bring out those darker tones there. And we can see some of those other, you know, shadowy areas that we weren't really able to see before. Now let's add another curves filter here. And let's use this one to sort of darken up the areas that we want to maybe just make a little bit less distracting. I'm just gonna grab my midtone point, pull down on this, just like that. And I may add in a little bit more darkness into the shadow tones. Just like that. And remember, we're painting this in in specific spots, so we don't, uh, we don't need this to look great on the entire photograph. We just need it to look good in specific regions that we're looking for. And what I want to apply this to is sort of this area of the scene here on the grass and maybe a little bit in this barn section there. Because if I turn this on, or if turn this off rather, if I zoom in to this specific section and I turn this off and on, I really like what the tone curve is doing to just give it a little bit more detail and make that section pop a little bit more. So let's go into the masking options. Let's invert that mask just like we did with the previous curves filter and let's actually rename this darkening. And now we can just do the same thing we did before and we'll just brush in that tone curve adjustment into those regions that we want to be a little bit more contrasted. You can see we just sort of are bringing in a nice even exposure by using these two different tone curves. And we can always go back in to any of those curves that we create. Remember, you can always add on as many as you'd like and you can fine tune to sort of fit what you're going for. So that is using different curves filter to selectively apply adjustments into different regions of your photograph. And remember, a little can go a long way, especially with the tone curve. So always go back and maybe fine tune or tweak just to ensure that things look nice and natural. But let's just hit the backslash scanner keyboard. This is the original. And then after with just the develop tab and then those two quick curves filters painted in. Let's move on to the next tip. My next tip for using and modifying the tone curve or the curves filter is to create faded and matte looks with it. So let's go into the effects tab. We'll add a filter and we'll add the curves filter. So to create a faded or a matte look on your image, it's really easy. All we have to do is grab our black point, this bottom left point, the black point within the scene. We'll grab this and then we'll pull up on it within the photo. You can see that by trying to brighten those specific dark regions of the scene, we get this sort of fade within the photo. Now to make the fade even stronger, we can drop another point within our sort of shadowy midtone regions and pull that down a bit. And you can use this to sort of fine tune how much of that fade or matte is incorporated into your scene there. Now, keep in mind that if you are 
using this technique on a brighter image with not a whole lot of blacks within the scene, you're not going to get very much fade. So ideally, you'd want to do this technique on an image that has quite a few black tones and dark shadowy tones within the scene. So let's just brighten this up just a hair. And I think it's looking pretty good. I really love sort of that faded matte look on the scene. And remember, it's all just from pulling up on this black point. This black point by default is just right there. So let's just pull up on that. And we're creating that fade and that matte look within the scene. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is that when it comes to fades and matted looks on your photography, one thing that looks really nice on them is textures. So let's add a filter here and let's just add on the textures filter. So even just right out of the gate with this default texture, if I turn this off and on, we could see a whole lot of that texture within the scene. But let's check out the texture if I, if I were to turn off this curves filter. So you can see with that curve and that faded matte look, it's sort of providing a foundation for that texture to overlay on. And you can see a lot of the different intricacies of that texture within the scene. So let's go into this texture here and let's just use this category photographic. And I really like playing with these scratchy textures, especially on urban images, but I really love these sort of scratchy textures here. I think there's another one, itchy, is it itchy? Yeah, this one, it's super crazy, right? But if we modify the brightness of it and we pull that back and we modify sort of the opacity of the image here or the texture, with just a little subtle texture there, we can give it really quite a bit of life within the scene and again, it's all sort of from this curves filter there, providing that if foundation, if you will, to overlay the texture on top of. And I think this might be a little strong. So let's use maybe a different one here. Yeah, we'll use this one, this scratch film one. I really like that one. I think it looks super nice within the scene. And one thing I want to do in these instances, or at least sometimes I like to employ this technique, is I like to head down to the colorize option. If you choose colorize, you can bring on a color into that texture and it will incorporate over the entirety of the photo. Now we can use this hue fill option to modify the color, but a nice blue usually works really awesome in these sort of urbex type images. And then we can always modify the amount there to fine tune. And so with this texture on top of the photo, combined with the curves filter, really sort of just brings a whole nother dimension to the scene. And one thing you can do with textures here, and it's really nice to do this, especially if you're trying to blend it on nice and naturally, we'll go into the gear icon and we'll use the shadow slider here. With the shadow slider, you can protect those shadowy tones in your scene from that texture and you can really sort of clean up some of those unwanted texture areas on your photograph. And sort of same thing with the midtones as well, or the skin tones. You can use this to protect these specific tones from that texture that you're overlaying on your photograph. And so remember, when it comes to faded and matte looks, it's all about that black point there. Pull that up within your scene, and then you can fine tune it with a nice shadow sort of mid-tone adjustment. So that was creating faded and matte looks. Let's move on to the next tip.
My next tip for using and modifying the curves filter is to use it to correct and recover blown out highlights. So with this photograph here, if I hold down the J key, we have a lot of sort of true white in the, in the image there. Well, we could do a few things, you know, we could go into the develop tab, we could try to remove some of the exposure and then maybe pull up on the midtones a bit within the scene, but we may be bringing back some of those highlights within the photograph and we may like the exposure as it is. We could also pull back on the highlights specifically, pull those back all the way, but even pulled back all the way, we're getting still a little bit of blown out area in the scene. Well, let's go and use our handy dandy curves filter to fix this. Let's go into the effects tab. We'll add a filter. We'll add the curves filter. And in the tone curve here, remember the point at the bottom left is the black point. To the top, it's the white point. So watch as I hold down my J key and I'll just grab this point here. And if I just move it down one notch, it instantly removes all of those blown out areas within the photo. So I'm holding down my J key, no blowouts. If we turn off the curves filter, there we go, they're all back. So you can see that by just pulling down a smidge on this white point there, we've removed all of those blowouts, we haven't modified anything else in the photograph, and things are looking nice. So again, that's just cleaning up highlights with the tone curve. Remember, the white point lives at the far top right area of the tone curve, and the black point is the far left bottom point. So just pull down on the white point, just a hair, or, you know, a little bit to remove those whites, and you're good to go. That's cleaning up highlights with the curves filter. Let's take a look at the next tip. My next tip for using and modifying the curves filter is to use it to color tone specific regions of your photograph. So with this image, I'm just gonna pull back on the exposure just a little bit and pull up on the midtones of hair and maybe add in a little contrast there. Just to make it a little bit darker, it's a little bit too bright and I sort of wanna showcase some of these different tones. So that's all I've done to the image. Let's head into the effects tab, let's add a filter and let's add curves. So in the curves filter, we've talked a lot about just using this all tab here, or this is by default, just what you've been using with the curves filter is just this all tab here, which is controlling all of the different tones within the photograph. Well, if we wanna modify specific color tones in specific regions of our image, we can do that with these three tabs here, the red, the green, and the blue. So with these different tabs here, and a helpful thing when it comes to remembering what they do is by taking a look at the gradient that is on the back of the tone curve. So with the red option here, you can see that as the gradient moves up, it gets more red. And as it moves down, it gets more green. So if I were to drop a point in my shadow tones and pull up, it's going to increase the reds in those shadowy mid-tone areas of my scene because I've dropped a point there and I've pulled up on it. If I were to pull down, it's going to remove that red and then bring in green. So let's just add in a little bit of red into our mid-tone, or our shadows rather. We'll add in a little bit of red into our shadow tones. Let's drop another point there in the mid-tones to sort of clean up our mid-tones from that. And I may clean that up a little bit, it's a little bit strong, but you can see by boosting up those reds in my shadowy midtone region, it can bring a whole lot of sort of color toning to that specific area of the photo. And I really like that. I think it adds in a nice bit of warmth into those areas. And we can always sort of go back and fine tune, but just to sort of showcase this as a demo, you can see that those shadowy tones within the scene now have a tint of red on them. Let's do the same thing with our greens. So with our greens here, you can see in the gradient, as we move up, it gets more green, and as we move down, it gets more sort of red magenta, 
So if we drop a point in our midtones and we pull this up, it's going to turn those middle tones green. If we pull it down, it's going to do the opposite and bring in that sort of magenta color into the photo. Now I probably don't want to add in any greens to this photo. Let's just head into our blues. And sort of same thing with the blues. You can see that as I move up in the gradient, turns it blue. And as I move down, turns it green. So with this scene, I want some blues in my midtones. So let's just drop two points there and then drop another point in the middle to sort of target those midtone blues within the scene. And you can see by pulling up on that section of midtones there, it does a whole lot to incorporate blues into those middle grays within the photo. Now, with split toning and color toning in the curves filter, it can become quite intense very fast. So just keep that in mind that these color adjustments are very powerful and they can be really quite strong. So you see now we have a much lighter sort of blue midtone section. We have more reds in the shadow tones and that's all just because of this curves filter here. Let's go into the reds again. Let's actually drop another point near our highlights here and I'm going to bring in some of those warm colors into the highlight section as well. So the image, you know, it's not as natural as it was before, but if we turn this off and on, I really enjoy that color tinting to it. And one thing I like to use along with these three different tabs here for the red, green, and blue channels is by going into the all channel and we can modify this as well. So let's maybe bring in a little bit of a fade there and we'll pull up maybe on these highlight midtones a little bit. And with this tone curve here, this curves filter, you can see it's doing a whole lot to modify the look of our image. Now these blues may be a little bit too intense. So let's pull back on those just a hair, maybe pull down on them. Yeah, let's pull down on them. So let's just pull down on the blues rather to remove some of them from the scene. And so you can see, you know, very powerful, very intense creative style can be created in that curves filter there. Now, one thing I like to add on to these split toning type images, especially if I'm going for a more creative look, is I'll go in and I'll add film grain. If I use a really strong film grain, such as this Kodak 3200, just pull up on the amount quite a bit more. It brings in such a nice, soft, vintage vibe to the scene along with those really beautiful sort of creative colors. And I just think it adds in a lot more oomph and you know grittiness to the scene, if you will. And so this is just with a curves filter and some film grain, just like that. And we have a nice creative style. We've modified specific color tones within our scene. We've modified the tone curve for all of the channels and we've added on film grain. Really easy to do, and it's all just in those different channels here, the red, green, and blue channels of that curves filter. Now remember, when it comes to these channels, you can use this gradient to help sort of guide you through what each channel is going to do to a specific tone in your image. My next tip for modifying and adjusting the curves filter is to use blend modes along with it. So in the effects tab here, let's just go and we'll add a filter and we'll add the curves filter. Now, one of the great things about the curves filter, especially for using blend modes, is that the curves filter doesn't actually apply anything to your photograph until you modify it. So by default, if I turn this off and on, it's not actually doing anything to my photograph yet. I have to go in here to the tone curve and fine tune it to see an adjustment happen. So this is a great thing for understanding blend modes because you can apply a blend mode to the tone curve and see exactly what that blend mode does to blend on the filter into your scene. So let's go into the gear icon here and we talked about the luminosity blend mode in one of the tips, but let's jump into a few other ones in this, in this tip. So we'll go into the mode here and we're at normal. This is just the normal blending option for the scene. 
Now there's quite a few blend modes here. We're not going to get into all of them, but there are a few really common ones that you can use in your editing to modify how that curves filter looks within your photo. So the first one, the first one I want to talk about is multiply. If I go to multiply here, you can see that it darkens things. Multiply is going to darken your image. So if we were to go back to normal here, you can see by default, again, that curves isn't doing anything to the photograph. But if we use this blend mode multiply, it instantly darkens things up within the scene, darkens things about a stop. Well, the great thing about using these blend modes within the curves filter is you can still modify your tone curve. So let's say we want it a little bit brighter. We can pull up on our mid-tone shadow tones within the scene. We can adjust contrast. We can still fine tune our tone curve all while having that multiply blend mode applied. Remember, multiply is going to darken things within your image. Multiply will darken. And I know it's kind of confusing because it has a darken blend mode right above it, but just keep in mind, multiply is the one, multiply will darken things within your scene. So we talked about multiply, which will darken. Let's talk about screen, which is the opposite of multiply. So you can see that screen will brighten things up. It's going to brighten up the exposure of the image about a stop. And remember, the tone curve by default isn't adjusting anything, so it's all this screen blend mode right here that is brightening things up within our photo. And we can always go back and we can fine tune any of that tone curve or readjust the tone if we need to, but I just wanna really emphasize that by default, the tone curve isn't doing anything until you adjust it. You can use these blend modes in here to really bring a lot of oomph to the tone curve right out of the gate. So we talked about multiply, which will darken things in your scene. Screen will brighten things up within your photo. And then let's go down to overlay. The overlay blend mode will incorporate contrast. So if I turn this off and on here, it's incorporating contrast within the scene. It's bringing a little bit of punchiness into the image there. If you wanted less contrast, we could pull up maybe on the shadow tones a little bit to sort of fine tune there, but overlay is going to incorporate contrast within your scene. So remember multiply darkens, screen brightens, overlay adds contrast, and the next blend mode I wanted to talk about is saturation. So saturation is sort of the opposite of that luminosity blend mode that we used. So we have the saturation blend mode applied. Let's just create sort of an S curve, if you will, within the scene. You can see it wasn't actually modifying any of the tone within the scene. It was just strictly modifying the color. So let's go up to our mode here and let me just showcase you the normal. So this is normal. This is with this tone curve applied to the scene at the blend mode normal. And you can see it's quite intense especially when it comes to the actual tones, you know, the contrast, exposure, things like that. But if we go into our mode and we choose saturation, you can see it's just targeting the colors within the scene. It's not modifying the tonal values. It's not modifying the contrast or, or really the brightness. It's just adjusting the color. So it's pretty much the opposite of that luminosity blend mode. So let's go back to that one image there that we were just working on where we applied that contrast. And it may be a little bit easier to, sh to see through this uh, edit here. So remember, we were on the saturation blend mode. So let me grab the curves filter. And in the curves filter here, let's just create that S curve that we did earlier. Looks really nice, but the, you know, the, image is modifying, or the tone curve rather, is modifying the image's color quite a bit. Let's say we just want that color modification. We don't want the tone enhancement. Let's go into the gear icon, go to our mode, and we'll choose saturation. You can see there, if I turn this off and on, 
it's not adjusting the contrast or really the exposure at all. It's just adjusting the look of the colors. So let's go to our mode here. And remember I was saying it's pretty much the opposite of luminosity. So if we choose the luminosity here, see how it protects the colors. And if we use saturation, it strictly targets those colors. So remember, in our blending modes, the five that are really awesome to use are multiply, which will darken, multiply darkens. Screen, which will brighten, screen brightens things up. Overlay, which adds contrast. Saturation, which protects the tones and modifies the colors within your scene. Or luminosity, which will protect the color and modify those tones. So multiply, darkens, screen brightens, overlay adds contrast, saturation will modify the colors, and luminosity will modify the tones. So those are using blend modes. Remember, those five are really helpful to use with your tone curve to just modify how it's blended. But there are uh, you know, a few more within the blending options that you can use with the Curves filter. I would highly recommend sort of exploring blending options further because you can really dive deep and get some really cool images with them. So that's blending modes. Let's move on to the last tip in this lesson. And my last tip for using the Curves filter in Photo Raw here is to just get creative with it. I have a couple of ways that you can use the tone curve that will really bring out a almost surreal look within your image. Uh, but it's really fun to play around with, especially when it comes to being a little bit more artistic with your edits. So the first thing I wanted to show you is just to how to create a negative of your image. So in the tone curve here, we have our black point and our white point. Well, let's just flip the black point up and then we'll flip the black or the white point down. And just right out of the gate, we have a really unique style within the photograph there. And it's from creating that negative look by again, just taking the blacks, dragging them up and then dragging the whites to the bottom there. So it's pretty much the opposite of that tone curve. And you can always modify this tone curve if you need to, to sort of fine tune. Or if you're trying to get a little bit more creative with the look, whatever it may be, creating a negative with the tone curve is super helpful sometimes when you're you know, again, just getting a little bit more stylistic with your edits. Now we can do the exact same thing or similar thing inside of these different channels here. So inside red here, let's just invert our red channel. Now it looks a little crazy, you know, super um, artsy and, you know, doesn't look very natural. But what you can do is fine tune the opacity here. And it almost brings sort of a faded color grading matte look into your scene. And then you can still do the same thing with those other channels. Let's say you wanted more blues in your midtones. You could still modify these different channels to fine tune where those different tones are being incorporated. And remember the opacity slider is your friend in these instances, especially if you're just trying to bring in, you know, sort of a cool, subtle, you know, split toning look or, you know, a color grading look into your scene. Another thing that you can use the tone curve for or the curves filter inside of photo raw for is for modifying black and white. So let's add a filter here and let's add the black and white filter. Now keep in mind with this method, you first have to have the curves filter below your black and white filter. So the black and white filter has to be on top in the filter stack. That way you can go into the tone curve here and you can modify different color toning within your image to adjust how this black and white filter is being applied. So for example, if we wanted to sort of modify the blues, within the scene, we could grab our blue channel here and let's just pull up on this 
or down on it to target the different blues within our scene. And especially that sky, if we sort of dim that down a little bit, we can modify how contrasted or how alive that sky section is. Now we don't have many reds in the scene, but if we modify this, you can see how we can really fine tune and adjust how these colors are perceived through the black and white filter. Now you could also sort of plan this out a little bit. So let's just reset this and let's go into the black and white filter and let's just choose red. So we've chosen red there. Now in the channel mixer conversion, it's going to be targeting those red colors for the black and white. So let's go into our curve here. Let's go into the red channel and watch as we fine tune our reds. you can adjust the strength of those different tones by just modifying that specific channel within the curves filter there. So those are my tips for modifying and using the curves filter inside of Photo Raw. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.